The year is 1542. Hernando de Soto's men hid his corpse in blankets, weighted with sand and sank it in the middle of the Mississippi River during the night. De Soto had encouraged the local natives to believe that he was a deity, an immortal son of the sun, as a ploy to gain their submission without conflict. Some of the natives had already become sceptical of de Soto's deity claims, so his men were anxious to conceal his death. How did one of the richest conquistadors who had returned to Spain end up in Mississippi? With Christopher Columbus's discovery of new lands across the ocean to the west, young men were attracted to rumours of adventure, glory and wealth. The Balboa expedition verified claims by indigenous people that the Panama Isthmus had another coast to the southwest along another ocean. The fantastic descriptions of Panama by Balboa, as well as by Columbus and other explorers, impressed Ferdinand II of Spain. He assigned Pedrarius de Vila as royal governor to establish more control over the colony and its resources. Pedrarius was a veteran soldier who had served in the wars against Moors at Granada and in North Africa. De Soto was with him. He sailed in June 1514 with a 22 vessel, 1500 men armada. They reached Santa Maria in July 1514. They then proceeded to Darien where Vasco Nunes de Valboa ruled as governor. In 1519, Pedrarias abandoned Santa Maria and moved the capital with all its organisational institutions to the Pacific Ocean's coast and found Panama City, the first European settlement on the shores of the Pacific. During the next five years, two of his lieutenants became a close associate of de Villa, de Soto and Pizarro. Pedrarius had promised Balboa his daughter in wedlock, but never trusted him. He instructed Pizarro to personally arrest him and bring him to stand trial. Balboa was accused of trying to usurp Pedrarius's power and create a separate government in the South Sea. He was beheaded in January 1519. Governor Pedrarius sent conquistadors, including de Soto, to explore northward and to settle that region. He also authorised the expedition by conquistador Francisco Pizarro to explore south, which would escalate into a conquest of the Inca Empire. The Spanish conquest of Nicaragua was not only a struggle against the indigenous people, who resisted and rebelled against the invaders, but also a struggle amongst the Spanish themselves, who competed for power and influence in the new territory. Pedrarius was superseded as governor of Panama by Pedro de los Rios and retired to Leon in Nicaragua, where he was named its new governor. Here he died in 1531, aged 63. De Soto, upon Pedrarius's death, left his estates in Nicaragua, bringing his own men on ships which he hired. De Soto joined Francisco Pizarro at his first base of Tumbes, shortly before departure for the interior of present-day Peru. Pizarro quickly made De Soto one of his captains. When Pizarro and his men first encountered the army of Inca, he sent De Soto with 15 men to invite Incan Emperor to a meeting. When Pizarro's men attacked the Emperor and his guard the next day, De Soto led one of the three groups of mounted soldiers. The Spanish captured the Emperor. Scared of a secret attack from Incas, Pizarro and his men executed the Emperor and headed to the capital of the Incan Empire. The Spanish plundered the city where they found much gold and silver. As a mounted soldier, de Soto received a share of the plunder which made him very wealthy. 
in 1535 to explore and conquer the southern part of the Inca Empire, De Soto applied to be the second in command, but he was turned down. De Soto packed up his treasure and returned to Spain. He was admitted into the prestigious Order of Santiago and granted the right to conquer Florida. His share was awarded to him by the King of Spain and he received 724 marks of gold and 17,740 pesos. He married Isabel de Bobadilla, daughter of Pedrarius de Villa and a relative of a confidant of Queen Isabella. De Soto petitioned King Charles to lead the government of Guatemala with permission to create discovery in the South Sea. He was granted the governorship of Cuba instead. De Soto was expected to colonise the North American continent for Spain within four years, for which his family would be given a sizeable piece of land. De Soto and his wife arrived in Cuba in 1538. Within the first couple of weeks of 1539, the first couple of Cuba purchased at least four plantations near the city of Havana. De Soto selected 620 Spanish and Portuguese volunteers to colonise North America. Isabel de Bobadilla was given power of attorney on the 17th of May 1539 when Hernando de Soto left Havana for the exploration and conquest of Florida. There were several political factions who were competing for power and control in Spain through exploration and control of unexplored territories. In the midst of the Spanish conquistadors, Isabella de Bobadilla was appointed to a highly politicised and powerful role. Averaging 24 years of age, the men embarked from Havana on seven of the king's ships and two caravels of de Soto's. With tons of heavy armour and equipment, they also carried more than 500 head of livestock including 237 horses and 200 pigs for their planned four-year continental expedition. Near De Soto's port, the party found Juan Ortiz, a Spaniard living with the Mocoso people. Ortiz had been captured by the Uzita and sentenced to death by the Native American chief two or three times saved each time by the intervention of the chief's daughter. The daughter led Ortiz out of town one night and showed him the path to a friendly tribe whose chief sheltered him. Ortiz had learned the native language and served as an interpreter to De Soto. The expedition travelled north, exploring Florida's west coast and encountering native ambushes and conflicts along the way. Hernando de Soto's army seized the food stored in the villages, captured women and forced men and boys to serve as guides and bearers. The army fought two battles with the Timucua groups, resulting in heavy Timucua casualties. After defeating the resisting Timucuan warriors, Hernando de Soto had 200 executed in what was to be called the Napituqua Massacre. De Soto headed north into the Appalachian Mountains of present-day Western North Carolina, where he spent a month resting the horses while his men searched for gold. De Soto next entered the territory of Chief Tuscaloosa, who was the paramount chief connected to a large and complex Mississippian culture. De Soto turned south towards the Gulf of Mexico to meet two ships bearing fresh supplies from Havana. He demanded women and servants, and when the Tuscaloosa refused, the European explorers took him hostage. The expedition began making plans to leave the next day, and Tuscaloosa gave in to De Soto's demands, providing bearers for the Spaniards. He informed De Soto that they would have to go to his town of Mabia to receive them. The Mobian tribe, under Chief Tuscaloosa ambushed De Soto's army in the village. The Spaniards fought their way out and retaliated by burning the town to the ground. During the nine-hour encounter, around 200 Spaniards died and 150 badly wounded. They killed an estimated 2,000 warriors at Mabila, making the battle one of the bloodiest in recorded North American history. 
the Spaniards had lost most of their possessions and nearly one quarter of their horses. They were wounded and sickened, surrounded by enemies and without equipment in an unknown territory. Fearing that word of this would reach Spain if his men reached the ships, De Soto led them away from the Gulf Coast. He moved to inland Mississippi where they spent the winter. On the 8th of May 1541, De Soto's troops reached the Mississippi River. De Soto had little interest in the river, which in his view was an obstacle to his mission. After a harsh winter, the Spanish expedition decamped and moved on more erratically. Their interpreter, Juan Ortiz, had died, making it more difficult for them to get directions and food sources, and generally to communicate with the natives. The expedition went as far inland as the Caddo River. Eventually, the Spaniards returned to the Mississippi River without finding the expected treasure or a hospitable site for colonisation. De Soto died of fever on the 21st of May, 1542. Scared of the natives finding out, his men were anxious to conceal his death. The actual site of his burial is unknown.